the world's so fantastical that nobody could figure out how you could technologically or special effects wise realize it all on the screen. Um, it was a real head scratcher. I mean, it makes sense that initially early people that were trying it, you know, almost 80 years ago were thinking all animated or all stop motion. But even then, that was quite a budget for those days. So I think it's only been in the last five to seven years that you could just fit it in the box if you were to do it correctly. For people on the outside, they think that you would have to make some kind of adjustment from uh, working on the animated movies to working with real live actors, including some who are known to be strong-minded, inc including Willem Dafoe and Samantha Morton. But did you have to make an adjustment? <laughs> I got that even on the set with the crew. They'd say, what's it like to work with people? And I'd say, well, I haven't been working with... I don't talk to computers. I've talked to human beings. I've been creating movies with 200 of the best artists I've known every single movie I've worked on. And so the idea of having to collaborate with another strong-minded artist who has a vision is what I was well trained for. Now, I understand that, but as you well know, and people must have pointed this out, Wally and Nemo um, aren't going to say, um, I don't understand this line, or I'm going back to no, my but trailer. No, that's not who I'm directing. I'm directing 50 human beings that all animate one oh. character. I'm debating with literally up to 100 artists that each have their own opinion to do one singular idea. So it's even easier on the set because I talk to one costume designer, one actor playing the role. I have to talk to multitudes of human beings to collectively do one idea. So I actually am better at it then I think a live action director could be at it as far as trying to convince the multitude to go a certain direction. Even so, the question of what a live actor needs from a director, you have to think about that, don't you? They're an artist. Again, they're a human being with two ears, mouth and eyes. And they have a brain. So does everybody else I've ever dealt with. They just want to know that what they're working on artistically is worth their time. And in that sense, every artist is the same. And an actor is no different. They're an artist too. They're not usually driven by money and fame for as much as that's a wonderful windfall. They want to make sure that what they're spending all their time investing their heart and soul in is going to count. And that is, to me, exactly the same kind of discussions I'd have with Willem Dafoe about what was the best thing versus an animator that's sitting at his desk. There are many debates in Britain, and I see in America, whether 3D is absolutely the cinema of the future or is just going to be an occasional novelty. Where do you stand on that? Well, nobody can know. Certainly history has shown that it was ultimately a novelty the first time it was tried. Um, what I applaud is the desire to get people to leave their homes and go to the theater. So anything that will get people to still go out and teach the next generation and, and pass on how great of an experience that is, then I'm all for it. And the question of budget, where everyone says $250 million yeah. budget, do you just close your mind to that or do you feel it, like sometimes people do when they're transferred in sport for big sums of money, do you feel it on your back? Well, that's assuming that uh, I've worked with the lesser budget. I've always worked with huge budgets. I mean, the truth is, this is all I've ever known. It's all scalable, it's all relative to whatever was the dollar at the time. But everything I've ever worked on has been a massive take no prisoners budget with everybody watching. I don't know any other way to do it. That's how I was taught. I didn't come up from the rookie indie level. So this isn't anything new to me. Now, having said that, I've always ignored what the budget is. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, I've never felt any gain to be worrying about numbers. I was always bad at math. All I care about is I look to my producer and go, can I get what I need on the screen or can't I? And do you feel a responsibility when they open to get the money back? I mean, do you look at the numbers and think, ooh, we're still some way off this? Um, yes and no. I mean, I do feel like... Uh, what I, I only think about one thing. Steve Jobs taught me one thing. Just make a good movie. Just put it all in the product that you're making. And all these other things people worry about will actually solve themselves. If you start worrying about all these other outside things, you'll inadvertently kill the golden goose. And that's all we've ever done. That's what he did with Pixar is he protected us from the outside and let us just pretend we were only making these movies for ourselves. Because if we were to follow any of the things people were naysayer about, you would never have seen any of the movies that we made.